Okay, um, hi, so I'm Louis. I'm a fourth year stats student and I'm actually on a work placement. Uh, you can see there from the branding at the MRC uh, Social and Public Health Sciences Unit. So this is where I've conducted the research. Um, and my question is this, is childhood obesity predictable uh, and therefore preventable? And I'll kind of explain what that means kind of as I go. Uh, but first, a bit of background. Um, so there's kind of two main points of background that you need to follow this. So the first, we have an idea, uh, we call it, does obesity track throughout childhood? So I've, I've put there uh, six out of 10 children who are obese at five to seven, uh, continue to be obese at 15 to 17. So we call that uh, overweight or obesity tracking through childhood, it's very worrying. Uh, and the second kind of main point is to do with inequalities. Uh, so since, since the 1990s, inequalities uh, in terms of health have been rapidly widening uh, in regards to obesity. Uh, so nowadays at the P1 assessment in Scotland, so that's at five years old, uh, in the most deprived areas, 26.5% of children are at risk of being overweight. Uh, and that's compared to just 17.5% in the least deprived areas. Uh, so you can see there's kind of a context of rapidly widening inequalities uh, with regards to this topic. Um, so of course that raises the question, well, what can be done? Um, so in health, we have an idea of in, uh, an intervention. Um, so you can see that an intervention is a strategy designed to produce behavior changes or, or improve health status amongst individuals or the population. Uh, so with obesity, that can be quite a broad definition, but essentially what it is, an intervention with regards to obesity can be something that gets uh, people moving or something that gets people eating healthier. It's quite simple. Um, but there's two types. So there's universal intervention, AKA target everyone, uh, or you can have a targeted intervention. So you can identify a subset of the population and say, you guys might have a higher prevalence, you might be more at risk, we're gonna target you guys and try and close those inequalities that I talked about earlier. Um, so then this is kind of, this is bringing me on to kind of what I've researched. So I had a very specific aim as a statistician, I'm used to working with data. And so essentially what we did is we, uh, we looked at routinely collected administrative data that might be collected by doctors or health professionals at a very young age. So between the ages of zero and sort of 27 to 30 months. And we wanted to try and use that to predict individuals who might be at risk of being obese or overweight at age five, so at the P1 assessment. Uh, and the reason we wanted to do that is because if you want a targeted intervention, as I talked about before, you need proof that the people you're targeting are the right people. Um, because otherwise, how do you know that you're gonna be affecting the right people in the first place? Uh, and more to the point, as we know that obesity tracks throughout childhood, we want a specific targeted prevention model um, because we wanted to target people before they'd become overweight in the first place and try and prevent that as early as possible to prevent it from kind of affecting them later throughout their, their adolescence or into adulthood. Um, so the data we used was, was uh, it covered not all children, but almost all children, most children born between uh, sort of September 2009 uh, and February 2013. Uh, and I've put some of the types of variables uh, that we used up there. We used about 19 in total. Um, and they're just kind of things you'd expect. So some of them country of origin, where they live, uh, their kind of socioeconomic status of the parents. And we kind of, we wanted to use them to kind of build models and say, okay, we can identify which children are in trouble. Um, so these are the type of models we built. We call them probability models. And essentially there's four different types there. They all work differently, but in layman's terms, what they do is they take these screening variables um, they do different kind of mathematical equations and your output at the end is a probability of an individual child uh, being overweight at five years old. Um, so you can see that they're all different. So we've got logistic regression, decision tree, random forest and gradient boosted trees. Um, and essentially what we have to do as statisticians is try and analyze just how effective those models are at that prediction. Um, so they all, they all produce something like this. Um, you don't have to understand what this is, but this is, we call it a receiver operated characteristic curve uh, or rock curve. Um, and essentially what we do as statisticians is we see that curve there and then we look at the area underneath that curve. So in this case, it's 0 0.795. Uh, we look at the area underneath that curve and that's kind of our measure of how well that model's performed. So you can see there I've put the, the kind of um, sort of limits on what, what different numbers mean. So the 0.795, that's a kind of moderate to good model. Uh, if it's 0.5, you're, you're essentially saying that, bot that model is no better than flipping a coin in terms of identifying which children are at risk. And if it's one, you're saying that model's done a perfect job. It's got everything right, okay? Um, so the first thing we wanted to do 
uh, was analyze which model performs best before we go any further. Um, so obviously you can see there, I think everyone, whether you're good with numbers or not, uh, you can, you can kind of generally get the idea that the highest number is the best. Um, so in this case, the logistic regression works best, 0.795. I'll remind you that's kind of a moderate to good model. Uh, but even the worst performing model there, uh, the decision tree, that's kind of moderate to poor. So it's, there's kind of not a large range, but we've identified the best performing model. Uh, why is this important? Well, I talked about obesity tracking throughout childhood. Um, so once we've identified the best performing model, the next thing we want to do is kind of get an idea of just how much being, say, overweight at a slightly earlier age impacts your prediction of being overweight at a later age. So we, we've identified the best performing model. We ran it again, uh, and we ran it. One of our predictors was BMI at 27 to 30 months. Um, so essentially, we ran a model with it, and we ran a model without it, because in that way, we get a quantitative measure of the predictive effect of being overweight at an earlier age and how that tracks through to five years old. Um, and you can see that there's quite a drastic difference when you, when you have one with it and one without it. So 0.795, as I said before, moderate to good model. Uh, without it, 0.613, that's essentially a moderate to poor model. Um, and it's kind of, it's verging on a fail almost. Um, and so what you can see there, there's quite a large difference in those two models. Uh, so what does that tell us? Um, well, first of all, it's very difficult to, to find a set of predictors that can accurately predict this. That's despite those inequalities existing. So there's, kind of, there's a distinction between how well something predicts uh, and whether there's inequalities in the first place. And you can see when we took away that, that kind of earlier measure, suddenly we had quite poor prediction. So the first thing you can say is it's hard to build a model that can predict obesity or overweight at five years old. Um, so I'll, I'll answer a couple of questions that I know might come up. The first is, um, can you use more models? Yes, maybe. Um, the kind of literature around this seems to suggest um, that the logistic regression tends to work the best. Um, the reason this study is important is because we've kind of done it over a much larger sample size than is usually done, so about 200,000 individuals. Uh, it's usually done over about 10,000, 20,000. Uh, so it's a much more representative sample. Um, and the second is, can you use more predictors? Well, so we used about 20, 21 predictors, depending on the model. Um, and that's kind of administrative data. So what that means is it's data that's regularly collected by health professionals. So in terms of getting any more predictors, the answer would be no, because we've pretty much covered all that are already collected. And it'd be far too costly to get even more predictors and bring them in uh, just for one study. Uh, and so what does this mean with interventions? Well, I talked about targeted interventions earlier and how they might be able to, to be used to kind of close um, inequalities with overweight or obesity. Um, the answer is this. Yes, you can use targeted interventions, especially considering we've kind of, we've come to a conclusion that being overweight at 27 to 30 months impacts whether you're overweight at five years old. So you can target those specific individuals that are already overweight. Uh, but if you want a prevention model, what our, what our kind of data and what our kind of analysis seems to suggest is that in terms of prevention, you want to go for a more universal approach. You want to target everyone at once, even though those inequalities, inequalities exist because we can't accurately identify who to target in the first place. Um, and so that kind of, that kind of universal in, uh, intervention approach, it kind of, what our data seems to suggest is that we kind of need more systemic changes uh, in our society as opposed to looking at specific subsets of society and trying to change them. So what a universal approach seems to imply is that you need kind of more legislation around, say, I mean, children at five years old, they're just starting school. So things like school meals, you might want to kind of look at making them a bit more healthy. Uh, and kind of one of the main things is talking to parents. Obviously, children at that kind of young age don't kind of have their own kind of decision making, especially in terms of their weight. So it's kind of an important thing is talking to parents, getting the information made public on how children, how they should be playing, how they can be more active while they're playing. Um, making sure that they're not snacking between meals, all, all kind of normal things that kind of most parents know. Uh, but it's just about making that, that information more broad and more public. And so, yeah, our, our, our data seems to suggest that that should be targeted at everyone rather than looking at kind of maybe deprived communities or, or different kind of geographic locations. Cool. That's me.